Peter said, I just wanted to get people up to speed with what EUCTR is. And, and for those of you who, know, who may know, it, it won't be long, so I won't, won't be boring anyone here. Um, so just to start with, the reason why EUCTR has come into place is there was an, a need to improve competitiveness for clinical trial research in Europe. So this new tr clinical trial regulation has replaced the existing clinical trial directive um, due to the fact that they wanted to increase harmonisation between member states. So the way that we look to increase the harmonization between member states is, is also supported by this new clinical trial information system. And this allows harmonized assessment and supervision of clinical trials with one clinical trial application submission through this portal. The other key aims of this new regulation are focused around increasing transparency of clinical trials, so allowing more clinical data to be available to the public. Obviously, there are reduction disclosure rules that will apply, and we can go into more details in those if, if people have questions on those. Um, but it, it, like I said, it, it's about increasing um, the availability of data to the public. The other um, benefit around the EU CTR is increasing the safety standards, and this is through harmonised safety reporting. So moving on to the bottom of the slide, um, on 31st of January this year, the EU CTR repealed the existing clinical trial directive and started the transition period to moving all clinical trial reporting through EU CTR. So in 22, so this year, clinical trial applications in EU can be still submitted through the clinical trial directive and also EU CTR, allowing sponsor companies to make the most of the time to pilot studies in the new system without it being fully mandated. So I know that the EMA sends out, um, well, used to send out regular updates on how many people have made applications through the system, and they now publish this data on their website. But it, it has started to be uh, taken up as we progress through this year. From the 31st of January 2023, all new applications in the EU must be submitted through ECTR. However, legacy studies, so studies that started prior to 2023, um, can still run through clinical trial directive. And then this last piece of the transition period um, highlights that from the 31st of January 2025, all new and existing applications must be submitted through EUCTR. So this means for any study that started before EUCTR was mandated and finishes after the 31st of January 2025, then you will need to transition your studies from the clinical trial directive to EUCTR. Um, and whilst doing this, you need to ensure that the, there's the harmonisation of documents across member states that is stated under the new regulation. So this is something that we have supported sponsors in developing and running training on these requirements to make sure um, we can translate what is, is highlighted in the regulation to make, make it more understandable and digestible. If we could move on to the next slide, please. So we have grouped the EUC CTR requirements into six key impact areas, and, and we've really focused our work around these key six impact areas. I'll touch on all of them at a high level in the next few minutes, um, but if anyone has any further questions on these topics, we're more than happy to go into more detail or answer questions in the Q&A session at the end. So starting with number one, the CTIS portal. As previously mentioned, the Clinical Trial Information System is a new portal and database that acts as a single entry point of entry for clinical trial interactions in the EU. It provides a centralised point for sponsors to interact with member states. So this, this goes back to the whole benefit around harmonisation, so access through this portal. The next key impact area is the CTA submission and planning. So all CTAs in the EU will be submitted to member states through CTIS. As, as previously mentioned, it's the aim of the EU CTR to increase harmonisation and therefore a single CTA must be submitted to all member states. So this goes back to the point I raised around harmonisation of documentation between um, member states. So you can't have a lots of different um, requirements for each, each country. So you've got to make sure everything is streamlined going forward under EU CTR. Also, as part of the CTA submission, there are additional requirements around responses to RFIs and subsequent application. And therefore, it's really important to add planning steps into your CTA submission um, planning process to ensure that you're compliant with the UCTR and that you don't get hit by new deadlines that are coming in and timelines that are coming in under UCTR. The third point that I want to touch upon is clinical supplies labelling. So 
the main requirement with IMP labelling is focused around ensuring expiry date is included on immediate packaging. This is the main, I, some sponsor companies have had some struggles with this and, and have had to update their, their resupply and, and relabeling processes. So there has been some lobbying against this requirement, but as it stands, this requirement will, will stay and therefore there will be impact, implications on, on supply. The fourth area that I want to touch on is around this transparency requirements, and I'm sure there'll be lots of uh, questions on this later because it is quite a big change under EUCTR. So, as I mentioned previously, the EUCTR, one of its aims is to ensure more data is available to the public, and therefore, sponsor companies need to ensure that there are steps in place to um, ensure personally protected data, so PPD, and commercially confidential information, CCI, is protected. The regulation lists different um, ways that this can be done and different steps, um, but this can be done through redaction of certain information or developing deferral strategies for the delayed publication of some information. And like I said, this is listed in the, the regulation around what different documents fall into different categories and what rules can be applied to um, this information. Mm -hmm.